Here are three text messages. Can you spot the fake? Everyone should have identified this one. It's obvious. The weird sender number, the badly written message, and of course that dodgy link. But here's the thing, there was another message that was also fake, and that one was harder to spot. Scammers are getting much more sophisticated, which makes it much harder to tell the real from the fake. The reason we knew this message was a fake was because it had all the telltale signs. The sender's number is someone we don't know. I mean, if it was, it would have had a name which is saved in our context. But what if a message appeared, but this time it looked like this? Now you're thinking, well, for that to happen, the scammers would need to send the text from your mom's phone. Well, actually, no. When you use a bulk SMS system to send out mess text messages, companies have the option of putting their company name instead of the number. This is known as sender ID. Now, to find one of these companies, it's not super hard. Go to Google, type bulk SMS where you can change the sender ID. Obviously, you're going to have a gazillion options to choose from. Select the one that you like and follow the instructions. This is where scammers come in. They're able to go online, find those less reputable SMS companies who do not do very many checks, allowing them to buy bulk SMS credits and use their own sender's ID as they like. They could literally put any name they want. Now, it's important to know that this doesn't work in all countries and some countries actually require you to register before you can use the sender's ID. But let's be honest, scammers don't really follow rules and registration is optional. So what these scammers do is that they mass spam random cell phone number list, putting Amazon or Google as the sender. And if you're a Google user or an Amazon user, if that pops up on your phone, at the very least, you're going to have a read. Okay, so let's look at the message itself and then I'll show you which one of these two is actually the fake one. We tend to assume the messages are going to have all these grammatical errors. Whilst this is still true, many scammers are turning to AI tools to write their messages for them. I've shown you in a video how I use ChatGTP to write a phishing email and I could just as easily ask ChatGPT to write a text message. Final thing is that link and that's usually the deciding factor if we're going to click or not click. So if a message comes from Amazon, Amazon, we want to see an Amazon.com in the link. Here, two scammers have a couple of tricks up their sleeves. What they do is very slightly misspell the domain in a way that you may not pick up on a quick glance of your phone. I mean, look at this message from Amazon. Amazon.com is actually a capital A, a lowercase r next to a lowercase n. And when you put the R and the N together, they look like an M. So this domain is actually arneson.com. You would never click on that, but if you didn't look carefully enough, it just looks like Amazon.com. So now let's look at the two messages from Google. This one is the real message. This one is the fake. Look at that link. The real one has Google.com like we would expect. But if you look on the link on the fake one, it looks like Google, but it's actually G-O-O-G uppercase I and then an E. A lowercase l and an uppercase i visually appear to be the same. If you get an SMS with a link, don't click on that link. If it comes from your bank or from Google or Amazon or anybody else, go to that main website first, then log in. And if there's anything that you need to actually do, that's where you're going to do it from. If the text message has a number that you need to call instead of a link, don't call that number and certainly don't call the number that sent you the text message. All you're going to be doing is confirming you have a valid cell phone number and now you've just been added to yet another list and all things are going to go wrong from there. Next thing is don't rush. Your bank is certainly not going to send you a message saying you have one hour to click on the link or we're going to shut down your bank account. They are expecting you to act on urgency, create some panic, and they think that you need to take action immediately, and that's going to save whatever account you're trying to save. And finally, when you know the message is absolutely spam, forward it to 7726, which actually spells out spam. Most providers will accept messages to this number because it helps them learn how spammers are communicating and block them at the network level. We're much more aware of phishing attacks and scammers in our email, but are less on guard when it comes to text messages. This is a critical message we have to get out there. Our mobile phones are just as valuable, if not more valuable than our computers. And we know that text messages with dodgy links may start on our phone, but ultimately they're gonna land up on a web browser 
number. And if we're not careful, we're gonna end up giving our important information to these scammers. In fact, I'm currently working on a video to test whether we do or don't need antivirus or some sort of protection on our phones. In the meantime, make sure you watch this video right here where I talk about antivirus issues or check out this video over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head down here to subscribe so you're notified of that new video and I'll see you in this video or this video or I'll see you in both. Let's go.